a Superman who doesn't fly, a Batman who kills and has a gun, and a Wonder Woman created from clay who seemingly likes bondage, the Earth 2 DC heroes who were introduced during the Golden Age of Comics are significantly different from their recent versions but still impressive. Comics made a great impact to the whole entertainment industry back then and even became a controversial national topic as the trends in comics including the DC heroes were subjectively connected to juvenile delinquency. Welcome to DCNES and today let's see how Earth 2 was created and glimpse into some of the origins of DC's Golden Age characters. Earth 2 is the universe of DC's Golden Age heroes or the Golden Age versions and origins of these heroes. The Golden Age of Comics basically started in 1938 with the introduction of superhero archetypes such as Superman, Batman and Robin and Wonder Woman from DC, Captain Marvel by Fawcett Comics, and Captain America by Marvel. The Golden Age is also marked by the introduction of the Justice Society of America, which included the first Flash, Jay Garrick, the first Green Lantern, Alan Scott, and the first Adam, Al Pratt. Because this is during World War II, some origins of the well-known characters and most of their plots may seem quite different to the modern age versions or disconnected or even nonsensical to the modern day audience. Nevertheless, these comic plots were embraced back then and they made significant profits for the publishers. However, after World War II, comic book sales for the superhero genre started to wane, especially for the titles of The Flash and Green Lantern. So, they cancelled Green Lantern Comics and Flash Comics in 1949 and halted the publication of All-Star Comics in 1951 which carried the stories of the Justice Society of America. Aside from the tapering sales, the comic book industry was investigated by the newly created United States Senate Subcommittee on Juvenile Delinquency as comic books may have instigated illegal behaviors among minors. From there, the Comics Code Authority was created and all these contributed to the end of the golden age of comics as many other titles were also discontinued. Then in 1956, DC reinvented and reintroduced The Flash with a new origin and a new costume and his name is Barry Allen. The new Flash was absolutely disconnected to Jay Garrick and in Barry Allen's world, Jay Garrick never existed other than in comic books. Fans loved the new Flash so in 1959, they also remade Green Lantern with new origins and new look and was named Hal Jordan. Barry Allen and Hal Jordan are one of the characters that ushered in the Silver Age of comics. Somehow, DC still noticed that many fans were still clamoring for the return of Jay Garrick's version of The Flash. Hence, in 1961, in The Flash number 123, DC found a way for Jay Garrick to make a guest appearance. While providing entertainment for orphans, The Flash Barry Allen unknowingly vibrated his molecules into a different frequency which brought him to a parallel Earth or a different dimension similar to his Earth which is the reality of Jay Garrick. They met and solved crimes together and that story became one of the most iconic points in comic history as it introduced the notion of an alternate reality. They made the same thing with the Justice League meeting the Justice Society and from there, the DC Multiverse was born with Barry Allen's Earth of the Silver Age baptized as Earth-1 and Jay Garrick's Earth of the Golden Age baptized as Earth-2. The JSA was officially introduced to be from Earth-2 in 1976 All-Star Comics No. 58. However, we need to take note that some backstories of Earth 2 heroes did not just last during the Golden Age. Some have been carried throughout the Silver and Bronze Ages of comics when Earth 2 was created. After the Crisis on Infinite Earth saga in 1986, some Golden Age origins were even mixed in or continued into the new Earth versions of the DC Golden Age heroes, especially to most members of the Justice Society of America. Now, let's get to know some of the heroes assigned in Earth 2. All I have. First is the Flash Jay Garrick. Running at velocities near the speed of light, Jay Garrick was a lousy football player but a brilliant student from Midwestern University. He studied the gases emanating from hard water. However, in one night of experimentations, he accidentally broke the flasks and inhaled the deadly flames of the gas elements all night before being discovered by his professor the next day. When he got better, he developed amazing speeds that he can run, walk, talk, and even think faster than thought. 
Discovering his ability, he started his crime fighting career and sported a red and blue costume with thunderbolt motif and a metal helmet with wings like the Roman god Mercury. He can catch bullets and even started playing tennis with himself. Only Joan Williams, his friend from the university, knows his secret at first. Then his technical expert friends later knew. It was later retconned that the hard water gases activated his metagene. Despite becoming the fastest man alive, Jay Garrick would still use his intellect and chemical research when solving crimes, which is quite similar to the more modern version of Flash, Barry Allen's forensic science background. Later, he became a one-man army for Cortavia, a small country being sieged by its neighbor Neural and Juan. He also became a valuable founding member of the Justice Society of America, together with the Atom, the Sandman, the Spectre, Hawkman, Dr. Fate, Green Lantern, Our Man, and Johnny Thunder. Their first task was to fight foreign spies and saboteurs in the US. Jay Garrick also remained a prominent scientist and founded Garrick Laboratories. When the golden age of comics ended, Jay Garrick was cancelled too, but returned as a frequent guest decades after. The preceding Bronze Age of Comics then saw the comeback of Jay Garrick and the Justice Society of America with them officially placed in Earth 2. Jay Garrick soon married Joan but after the war, they found that Joan could not bear children. So they adopted an infant boy. Two weeks after the adoption, the child passed away from pneumonia. This led to Jay and Joan choosing to mentor and adopt many young heroes and treat them like their own children. After the Infinite Crisis event, Jay Garrick was then combined to the New Earth timeline, making him living in the same reality with Barry Allen, and Jay Garrick's city, Keystone City, became the twin city of Barry Allen's Central City. Hello, guy, is it? Next is Green Lantern Alan Scott. Unlike the origin of Hal Jordan where the Green Lantern ring was given by the Guardians of Oa, Alan Scott's Green Lantern power came from a meteor that fell in ancient China thousands of years ago. The meteor released a small pool of flaming liquid metal with green light and gave out a prophecy about its three flames. First flame will bring death, second flame will bring life, and third flame will bring power. A lamp maker then took the liquid metal and created a lamp. Out of fear, the villagers killed the lamp maker and the lamp released its first green light that killed the villagers. The lamp was then passed through many hands and arrived in America outside an asylum. It was then given to one of the patients of the asylum who transformed the lamp into a train lantern. The lantern released its second green light and removed any insanity from the patient, thus giving him a new life. Later, it landed on the hands of Alan Scott a bridge construction engineer who has just finished at Trussell Bridge. He was testing the bridge while riding a train when an explosion happened, presumably caused by a rival company. Because he was holding the lantern, everyone died on the crash except him. The lantern released its third green light and gave Alan Scott power. The lantern further spoke that he must stop evil and his energy will be based on willpower. The lantern also instructed Alan to create a ring. He then created a ring and used it to avenge his colleagues who died in the crash and so he became the Green Lantern. Golden Age Green Lantern can face through walls and is bulletproof. However, he is apparently not immune to wood. The ring can give him flight, can release light rays that can melt metal, can help him read minds, wipe memories, create hard light objects, paralyze others, share willpower and courage, hypnotize others, and can also be charged using the lantern. This Green Lantern has remarkable fighting skills, so there is no need to create a giant fist. He also liked putting a small Green Lantern logo on the faces of his enemies like a signature. Anyone else who would steal and wear his ring would die immediately. Later, he became a founding member of the Justice Society and its second chairman. His main nemesis is Solomon Grundy and he had a sidekick named Doibe Dickles. He also had a dog sidekick named Streak the Wonder Dog. It was later revealed that Alan Scott had twin children with a woman who has dual personalities named Rose and Thorn. Their children grew up to be known as Jade and Obsidian, who became members of Infinity Inc. Alan also married a former enemy, Molly Main, aka the Harlequin, and reconciled with his twin children. Like Jay Garrick, Alan Scott was mixed into the new Earth reality after the crisis on Infinite Earths. 
it was retconned that Alan Scott's power ring came from a Green Lantern named Yellen Gore, who was a favorite of the Guardians. In the New Earth era of DC, Alan Scott rejoins the JSA in the fight against Humanite and joined Guy Gardner in fighting Hal Jordan who became Parallax. He passed his Green Lantern ring to Kyle Rayner. Somehow, the Star Heart became part of his body and he became known as Sentinel. He also became an honorary member of the Green Lantern Corps. Carter Hall, an ancient Egyptian in a modern Egyptian's body. Oh, and he's got wings. Claims this is his uh, fourth reincarnation. Third is Hawkman Carter Hall. In the golden age of comics, Carter Hall first appeared in 1940 in the Flash series as a wealthy collector of weapons and was created by Gardner Fox and Dennis Neville. His golden age backstory revolves around Prince Khufu of ancient Egypt and his rival, the priest, Hatset. Hatset killed Prince Khufu and his consort Chaira. Fast forward to the 20th century, Prince Khufu reincarnated as Carter Hall, an American research scientist, Chaira reincarnated as Chaira Sanders, and Hatset reincarnated as Anton Hastor, a scientist. When Carter discovered the knife Hatset used to kill Prince Khufu, Carter regained his past life memories. He also discovered a rare metal known as Ninth Metal, now known as Ent Metal, to create a gravity-defying belt, a set of wings, and a harness-like costume. He also used weapons from his museum and collections. He then became Hawkman, confronted Anton Hastor, and reconnected with Shaira to start a new relationship. Carter also created Shaira's costume, who then became Hawkgirl. Together, they became a famous power couple and the most sought-after couple in comics. Hawkman became very popular that he appeared in every issue of Justice Society-related comics during the Golden Age. With all of his adventures, Hawkman then became a member of the Justice Society of America or the JSA and became its chairman after The Flash and Green Lantern became honorary members. Under Hawkman and because this was during World War II, the JSA entered the battle in Japan, changed the team name to Justice Battalion, and made Wonder Woman as their secretary. However, the Nazis were able to capture them and then sent the team into different planets across the solar system. Since the JSA members helped the different beings in those planets, the local residents helped them return to Earth. Meanwhile, Carter also enlisted as a pilot during World War II and the team gave food to the hungry citizens of Europe. In the 1950s, after the war, under the influence of Per de Gatton, the Congress accused the JSA as sympathizers or supporters of Hitler and forced them to reveal their true identities. Naturally, they declined and Hawkman and the JSA chose to disband and live private lives. However, the reality during that time is that the entire superhero genre of comics became weak in terms of sales, and this marked the end of the golden age of comics. Thus, the series carrying them, All-Star Comics, halted its publication of the JSA after number 57 of the series in 1951. Aside from reincarnation, the Golden Age Hawkman can talk to hawks and he was given by Poseidon the ability to breathe underwater. Because of collected knowledge from different reincarnations, Carter Hall is also an ingenious inventor. He invented a way to store food in tiny capsules that the JSA used on famine relief missions and also a bubble-shaped anti-gravity flying vehicle. Carter Hall and Shaira had a son named Hector Hall who became the Silver Scarab. Hawk Girl the Golden Age Hawk Girl Shaira Sanders is the wife of Hawkman. She is the reincarnation of Chaira, the lover of Prince Khufu, who is Carter Hall's past life, and they both lived during the ancient Egyptian period. They were killed by Hatset with a knife created from an alien metal called the Ant Metal. The metal's properties caused for Chaira, Prince Khufu, and Hatset to be reincarnated in many lifetimes. In the 20th century, Shaira and Carter Hall met and they became Hawkman and Hawk Girl and joined the All-Star Squadron and later the Justice League of America. Shaira also served as a nurse for the US Navy during World War II and she can also speak to birds. Her occasional flashbacks of her past lives sometimes cause disorientation and as soon as she and Carter form a deep bond, they are destined to be murdered again and their reincarnation cycle continues. Batman. Like any Batman origin, Earth 2 Bruce Wayne was orphaned as a child when his parents were killed by a mugger that led to Bruce later trying to avenge their deaths. 
he was sent to Hudson Academy by his uncle Philip Wayne, his legal guardian. He worked hard to achieve physical perfection and studied to become a master scientist in college where he met his first girlfriend, Julie Madison. When Julie disagreed for Bruce to become a police officer, he decided to create a disguise while fighting crime. Because criminals are superstitious and cowardly, he decided a disguise that would strike terror. When a bat flew in through his window, he took this as an omen and decided his look should be like a bat. The first criminal he fought was Slugsy Kyle who was trying to steal from a warehouse but Bruce almost failed. This near failure made Bruce settle down with Julie and find a desk job while Julie pursued acting in New York City. His uncle Philip is a friend of Commissioner Gordon. When Bruce asked for a recommendation to the NYPD, Gordon brought him to a murder scene in Apex Chemical Corporation. This crime scene reignited Bruce's crime-fighting dream, took down several thugs, stopped the conspiracy, and solved the case. Bruce then secretly became a skillful but forceful vigilante who seriously injured many of his early adversaries and even killed some of them. He became more effective in taking down organized crime syndicates and achieved the veneration of Commissioner Gordon. Gotham's criminal underground became aware of Batman and was soon faced by a mad scientist known as Dr. Death. When Julie was hypnotized by the mysterious monk, Batman killed the monk. The Golden Age was also the first appearances of Batman's famous rogues gallery, the Joker, Hugo Strange, Clayface, Scarecrow, the Penguin, Boss Maroney, Two-Face, Twiddledom and Twiddledee, the Riddler, Mad Hatter, Deadshot, Killer Moth, Firefly, and Catwoman. Other than Catwoman and Julie Madison, the Golden Age also presented other love interests such as Linda Page and a model Magda Lovescu. We also saw the Bat Signal for the first time by GCPD. Commissioner Gordon and Batman started working directly to apprehend various criminals including mob bosses and super criminals. Batman later starred in his own radio show where he shared some of his adventures. Of course, since this is in the 1940s, Batman and Robin also stopped some Nazi spies from sabotaging US war strategies. Alfred Beagle was also introduced as Bruce's butler and assistant, a stout fellow who proved to be useful in capturing criminals. Yes, it was not Alfred Pennyworth, but Alfred Beagle. We also first saw the Batcave that kept his vehicles, secret laboratory, and a gym. Batman finally found Joe Chill, the killer of his parents. Batman stalked Joe Chill and revealed his true identity to scare him into submission. Joe Chill sought help from other crooks but was shot dead when they learned he was responsible for creating Batman. Bruce then became mayor of Gotham City that gave problems with his secret nightlife. Batman was later recruited by the United States federal government to be a member of a clandestine team against Nazis in Europe and stop the assassination attempt on the life of President Franklin Roosevelt. Superman and Batman then founded the Justice Society of America together with the other costume heroes but Batman served only as an honorary member because of his many activities. When the Justice Society disbanded after World War II, Batman and Catwoman fell in love and got married. They had a daughter named Helena. Deciding not to orphan his daughter, Bruce temporarily stopped being the Batman and allowed the grown-up Robin to do the crime fighting. Catwoman was later extorted by a previous enemy named Silky Cernak to commit a crime for him. Catwoman plotted against Silky but was shot by Silky and died in Batman's arms. Because of this, Bruce permanently retired but Helena became the huntress and captured Silky. After Gordon retired, Bruce became the new police commissioner of Gotham City. He returned as Batman and tried to stop Bill Jensen who had been granted superpowers by the sorcerer Frederick Vaux. Out of desperation, Jensen decided to destroy Batman and himself with a mystical blast which succeeded in killing Batman that caused the revelation that Bruce and Batman are one. Dr. Fate then defeated Frederick Vaux and erased the memory of all Earth 2 population about Batman's identity. Huntress and Robin continued protecting Gotham afterwards. Robin Dick Grayson of Earth 2 aka Robin was also born to a circus family, John and Mary Grayson, and they were called the Flying Graysons. 
When the circus owner refused to pay protection to a local mob headed by Tony Zuko, the mob killed the Flying Graysons during their trapeze act, but Dick survived. Bruce Wayne witnessed their death and adopted Dick. Although Bruce did not intend to introduce Dick into crime fighting, he still trained Dick in wide-ranging acrobats, fighting skills, criminology, and investigation to protect himself from Zuko and channel his grief into action. He was then baptized as Robin the Boy Wonder, and he was only 8 years old when he started. When Batman was captured, Robin rescued him and this impressive feat made him a permanent sidekick to Batman. They had plenty of crime-solving adventures together, with Robin solving mysteries on his own on some occasions, but sometimes still becoming the hostage of some villains. When Robin saved Batman from the Joker, Joker viciously attacked him that left him in need of surgery to recover. For his ninth birthday, Bruce gave him his own Batplane. He soon captured Penguin and his gang on his own. Sometime later, his uncle George who had been living in New York claimed for custody over Dick Grayson and demanded $1 million in exchange of custody. His uncle George lost due to his ties with some criminals. Professor Carter Nichols allowed Batman and Robin to travel 300 years into the past and discover the origin of the Batcave. There, they learned that the Batcave was previously occupied by an Indian spy, Jeremy Coe. When Robin grew up and went to college, he also had his own nemesis such as No-Face. The adult Robin then became a member of the Justice Society of America. Dick soon became a partner in a law firm and an ambassador for the United States to South Africa. After Batman's death, Dick thought about carrying the mantle but Helena stopped him. However, he assumed the role of Batman despite that on a fight with the Joker. He also met Batman of Earth-1 where his feelings about being a successor resurfaced. Robin and Huntress became the new dynamic duo and together they fought in the Dawn of Time, which is a battle against the Anti-Monitor during the Crisis on Infinite Earths story arc. They were reduced to ashes by the Thunderers and buried at Valhalla Cemetery. Meow. Catwoman The Master Thief Selina Kyle was 18 years old when she became trapped in an abusive marriage. Selina divorced her husband, but he was vengeful and ruined her financially and emotionally. To get back at him, she broke into their former house and stole the gems he had bought for her while cracking a complicated safe. She then got a thrill from stealing, wore a disguise, and became a jewel thief known as the Cat. Her first encounter with Batman was advantageous as he was attracted to her so much that he seemingly allowed her to escape. On their second encounter, she is now known as Catwoman and Batman bargained with her to get information about the Joker. She was later hired by the Diamond Syndicate to steal diamonds connected to insurance fraud and was also hired to assassinate Ronald Reagan. She did not go through it but Batman turned her over to the police. Catwoman escaped and impersonated the socialite Margaret Tone with a new gang and a scheme to steal more. Batman captured her, but Catwoman kissed him and she escaped once more. She then changed her outfit, dropped the cat head mask, and used a leather head piece with cat ears. Her next crimes became more feline, usually using household cats to help her in her criminal endeavors. She had clawed gloves, a cat mobile called the kitty car, and a diamond tipped cat o' nine tails. Some time later, a brick struck Selena in the head that released her suppressed memories that made her give up her life as a criminal. She started a pet shop business and helped her brother Carl reform as well. Soon, Selena and Bruce had a serious romantic relationship, got married, and had a daughter, Helena Wayne. Huntress. Daughter of Batman and Catwoman, Helena Wayne lost her mother at the age of 19 and swore revenge and became the Huntress. She pursued Silky Cernak and arrested him and placed him in a net outside of the police headquarters. She worked with Dick Grayson and later became a member of the revitalized Justice Society of America as well as of Infinity Inc. She also became one of the head executives at Cranston Grayson and Wayne Law Firm. The First Adam Al Pratt, aka The Atom, first appeared in 1940 as a 98-pound fragile student in Calvin College who suffered bullying due to his short height of 5'1 and was called Atom Al. One day, he bought dinner for a homeless guy who turned out to be Joe Morgan, a former boxing champion who then trained Pratt into becoming a massively strong fighter with unbelievable strength. 
Now calling himself the Atom, he decided to use his new ability to protect the oppressed. At the beginning of World War II, President Roosevelt established the costume heroes to work together and create the Justice Society of America. The Atom was a founding member and also joined the All-Star Squadron. He also served as a tank driver for the United States Army. He became a close friend of Wildcat and was present in the battle with Ian Karakul, where he was showered with mystical energy that kept him young for decades. On a battle with Cyclotron, an energy blast was released that caused for Al Pratt to have radiation immunity by the late 1940s. He also had a car called Atomobile. When Adam saved Starman from an explosion, he was unharmed by this and the radiation gave him additional invulnerability. This inspired him to study nuclear physics and obtain his PhD. The JSA then retired in 1951. He revealed his true identity to Mary James and married her. Years later, when the JSA went back from retirement, they are now designated in Earth 2 and when they teamed up with the Justice League, Al met Rafe Palmer, the new Atom of Earth 1. The JSA fought in the crisis on infinite Earths but they were drawn into a limbo to prevent Ragnarok. Now in New Earth, Al was reunited with his beloved Mary. They had a child but Vandal Savage stole this child and killed Mary. In the Zero Hour series years later, Al and the JSA went to the realm known as Vanishing Point where they were ambushed by Extant. Al hurled himself at Extant but Extant killed him instantly. Wave Rider took Al's body and was buried in Valhalla Cemetery. Albert Rothstein, his godson, later took the name of Atom Smasher in his legacy. The hero Grant Emerson aka Damage was later discovered to be Al Pratt's son. Follow my voice. Dr. Fate Powered by Naboo and a founding member of the Justice Society of America, Dr. Kent Nelson aka Dr. Fate is a powerful sorcerer and agent of the Lords of Order. Together with his archaeologist father, Sven Nelson, they explored the Valley of Ur in Mesopotamia when they found an underground pyramid which housed Naboo, an ancient immortal being from the planet Cilia. Naboo had been held in suspended animation for thousands of years. When Kent released Naboo, the lever released a poisonous gas that killed his father. Naboo would then make Kent his new host and teach him the secrets of the universe. He gave him incredible powers through total molecular control and had him serve with the Lords of Order in their never-ending fight against the Lords of Chaos. Naboo then gave him an amulet, cloak, and helmet and became Dr. Fate. His first battle was against the evil sorcerer Watan. Naboo would guide him on many adventures but Kent oftentimes would have no memories of these adventures. He would later meet Inza Kramer while traveling through Alexandria who would become his longtime romantic partner. With Inza, he stopped Magno the Mighty, stopped the Norms, defeated two species of evil spacemen, destroyed the Lost Book of Thoth, and challenged by Mr. Who, the Clock, the Red Sage, and the evil genius Karkul. He soon pursued his medical degree and became a doctor. He would then work with the Spectre to destroy a military gateway to a netherworld of demons. And at the request of President Roosevelt, he and the other costume heroes formed the Justice Society of America. Eventually, Kent Nelson realized that Naboo's helmet is taking over his body so he created the Half Helm. The Half Helm limited his powers but he had more control and still had many other abilities. He would later become a member of the new Justice League and defeated Darkseid. In the Battle of Chaos and Order, the strain caused for Inza to commit suicide. Kent wanted to die as well but Naboo did not allow it until he found a new host. When Kent found Eric Strauss as the next host, Naboo allowed Kent to die. Dr. Fate's powers include Divine Empowerment, Telekinesis, Invulnerability, Teleportation, Eldritch Blast, Extreme Magic, and more. Starman In his beginnings, Ted Knight was an extremely wealthy heir from Opal City who devoted a lot of his time to science. He discovered great amounts of energy coming from the stars but had no way of harnessing them. He met Professor Abraham Davis who previously created the weapon Black Light Ray that the Phantom Lady used for invisibility. Together, Ted and Professor Davis created the gravity rod that can be used for flight, energy projection, and more. They then looked at the star energy Ted had discovered as the power source. Inspired by Phantom Lady's crime fighting, 
who is also his cousin and by Batman and Robin's investigative skills, Ted used the name of Starman and used the gravity rod to fight crime as well. He quickly became an ally of the FBI and became a member of the JSA. He owns a thoroughbred named Fleetwing and he is an experienced equestrian. He is an atheist and an avid fan of astronomy. He is a genius and he created the gravity rod and the cosmic staff used by his son Jack and later by Stargirl and the cosmic converter belt worn by the Star Spangled Kid and later also by Stargirl. Ted was also a pilot during World War II. His son David became the next Starman but was immediately killed within a week by the son of one of Ted's enemies. Hesitantly, his other son, Jack inherited the title and Ted gave him a more powerful staff, the Cosmic Rod. Meanwhile, Ted would still use his cosmic-powered inventions for the benefit of mankind. He made friends with one of his old villains, the Ageless Shade, who genuinely cared about the city of Opal. His last fight with Phosphorus gave him cancer and eventually died when the Mist, one of his old enemies, detonated a bomb. You have no idea what you've set in motion. Changing the Earth's past has created not a ripple, but a tidal wave of disturbance. James Corrigan, aka the Spectre, is the embodiment of God's wrath in punishing evildoers. When a group of soldiers butchered a band of Cherokees during the American Civil War, the Spectre killed the soldiers and left only one man alive, who only stole from the Cherokees. The Spectre allowed him to live but warned him that the Spectre will steal from him someday. The soldier would have a son named Reverend Jebediah Corrigan, and this reverend is the father of James Corrigan. When James was young, the reverend had an affair with their housekeeper, Rose. During that time, James was very close to Rafe, the son of Rose. Rafe and Rose were forced to leave when the wife of the reverend discovered the affair. When Rafe was killed in a storm, he blamed his father, the reverend, and rejected his teachings and their religion. James grew up to be a merciless police detective in New York and became engaged to a socialite Clarice Winston. He accumulated many enemies so James and Clarice were kidnapped by the men of Gat Benson. James was placed in a barrel filled with cement and then thrown into the river. Filled with vengeance, James' spirit was then confronted by a mysterious voice that offered him justice by being bonded with the divine wrath. He was allowed to live again but was tasked to fight evil with his given superpowers. Now the Spectre, James rescued Clarice and exacted his revenge against Benson. His partner, Percival Poplaski, discovered his alter ego as the Spectre and designed his costume. He helped the other heroes against Hitler's attack on England and the US and was vouched by Dr. Fate to become a member of the Justice Society. When the JSA disbanded at the end of the Golden Age, he disappeared without a trace. After 20 years, during an investigation, James attended a seance that brought the return of the Spectre. It was explained that the presence of the demon Asmodus on Earth made him trapped within James' body. The Spectre then defeated Asmodus and resumed his actions. The power of the Spectre include divine empowerment or unlimited magical potential, invisibility, intangibility, size alteration, he can inflict death with just a glance or revive dead people, he is omnipresent and has powers in molecular reconstruction. However, he can be killed by the Spear of Destiny. Wildcat Ted Grant was raised during the Great Depression with his father Henry who vowed that he would not grow up afraid of anyone. So, he encouraged young Ted to participate in sports. He became excellent in boxing and many martial arts. As an adult, Ted tried to study medicine but became a professional heavyweight boxer instead. One night, he saved the heavyweight boxing champion Soccer Smith from a mugging incident. Soccer Smith took Ted under his wing trained him and soon became a heavyweight boxing champion himself. However, Ted became entangled in a criminal plot fabricated by his managers Flint and Skinner who attempted to fix one of Ted's matches by drugging Sucker Smith to slow him down during the fight. However, Flint and Skinner underestimated the potency of the drug and Sucker Smith died because of it. Flint and Skinner then framed Ted for the drugs and then they arranged to assassinate Ted to prevent the truth from coming out. Ted survived but the police officers holding him were killed. 
Ted was blamed again for their deaths, and while on the run, he met a boy who described Green Lantern, which inspired Ted to become a vigilante. He fashioned a costume of a large black cat, called himself Wildcat, and vowed to clear his name. He eventually cleared his name by forcing Flint and Skinner to confess. He then continued to fight crime, had a motorbike named Cato Cycle, and a comedy sidekick named Stretch Skinner. He also owned a silver mine. Wildcat also became a member of the JSA. He also had a romantic relationship with Pinapolera, who traveled back in time and operated as the Wonder Woman. Zatara and King Inferno cursed Ted with nine lives, which allowed him to recover from fatal injuries. With his girlfriend Irina, Ted had a son named Jake Grant. However, Jake was kidnapped by the Yellow Wasp, one of Ted's enemies. He would have another son, Thomas Bronson, with a one-night stand, Marilyn Branson. He would also become the combat teacher of Batman, Black Canary, and Catwoman. He also became a lover of Catwoman. He is an expert in capoeira, hapkido, krav maga, and muay thai. During the Crisis on Infinite Earth story arc, Ted's legs were crushed by an out-of-control red tornado and was told he would never walk again. Yolanda Montez, his goddaughter, then became the second wildcat. So there goes part 1 of Earth 2 DC Multiverse Origins. They definitely all have colorful and interesting backgrounds and we cannot contain them all in just one video. Before we publish part 2, do you have any Golden Age DC character who you'd like to be included in this Earth 2 feature? Who is your favorite Justice Society member so far? Let us know about your ideas, then like, subscribe, and if you can, give us a thanks. Thank you and see you again on part 2.